This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. All right, we've got a call on a walk-in cooler that is not working properly. Uh, I don't know that I could zoom in, but that thermometer says 48 degrees right now. The coils are not iced up. There's an interesting smell in here though. Um, we're gonna jump on the roof and start up there. My walk-in cooler compressor's in this rack. Compressor is hot to touch. Ooh. And it's not running at the moment, but it's hot. The breaker is on for the compressor right there. It's not good. And, huh. Okay, we better open it up. All right, this is a single phase compressor. We're gonna start with uh, start with the pressure control. The pressure control has no voltage, so it's not an open pressure control. So now we need to check main power coming into the compressor. All right, so as I'm testing power, the compressor just turned on. I can't do it with one hand, but it has 208 volts going to it. And uh, the compressor just turned on like it was off on thermal overload. So I need to put some service gauges on it and see what's going on. That's my next step. I'm gonna turn it off though real quick. So come over here. That's it right there. I shut it down. I'm a little concerned because this condenser fan motor is not running. It's running backwards. But we'll find out in a minute. I need to get some gauges, figure out if it has refrigerant in it, and that'll help me to understand a little bit more. It wasn't off on low pressure or high pressure though. We have equalized refrigerant pressures, or pretty darn close to equalized. I've got my uh, amp clamp on the compressor, and we're gonna go ahead and power this guy up and see what happens. gonna watch it for a minute current draw doesn't look too high at the moment seven amps it says max 14.9 I think we're going off on high head pressure look at how quick the head pressure is climbing and we don't have a condenser fan motor running I think our condenser fan motor might be the problem it's it's slowly climbing but I have a feeling that this thing is running too high and uh it's an auto reset pressure control Three, yeah we're going off on head pressure we gotta figure out why that condenser fan motor is not running so i powered down the compressor so that way we're not running too hot right now and i'm just going to my condenser fan motor fuses one by one we're going to test them real quick and this is a 208 volt circuit so we've got one bad fuse i'm just going down the line that one's good. Sorry, that's the frame rate of the camera making it look funky. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. So we got one bad fuse right here. So we got to figure out what the amp is, uh, the amp, you know, the, what the rating of the fuse is, and we'll uh, test the motor out. I went ahead and shut down the rack, um, and I just pulled this capacitor down. It was mounted up on that rail. I'm just investigating it. I came inside here and uh, turned off, like I said, I turned off the rack, there's no power. And then I tested everything to ground on this guy. I went ahead and changed the fuse, but I tested to ground to see if there was a direct short to ground and there was not whatsoever. So before I do anything, I'm investigating this motor to see if there's a reason. I don't wanna turn power on and blow that fuse again. So I'm just investigating in here. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that it could be. Could have shorted out anywhere. So that's what we're just investigating everything to see if we can figure out a reason for it to blow a fuse. Looks like, actually it looks like there could be a direct short right there. There's a hole in the conduit. I mean, there's so much stuff going on here. They've got 
way too much stuff crammed in that half inch conduit. That's ridiculous. But this is what I'm looking at right here. I don't know if that's a short or if that's just nothing, but it's just, there's so much stuff crammed in there. So that's the power for the other condenser fan motor too over there. So I don't know which one it is here. And so the capacitor tests out good, 10 microfarads. Even though it doesn't look great, it tests good. So we need to keep investigating to figure out where this short might be. All right, it was a chore and I ended up peeling back all that conduit. It was all jacked up because of that hole. Now, in doing so, I broke this wire right here, but that's not what I'm concerned about. Look right there. That was where the hole was. That was shorted out. So in, in pulling the conduit back, I busted that because I was using my snips and I ended up doing that, but that was a short and that's what caused that hole. What's interesting though, is that this, oh, there's another one right there too. Oh no, that's the same one, yeah. But this red wire actually doesn't feed this fan motor. This red wire feeds this fan motor over here, which is not the problem at the moment. So that's interesting. We'll have to figure that one out. Um, I'm thinking, I, I pulled back, these are the wires for this motor right here, and I pulled them back and I, I inspected them. I don't see any damage, but the reason why I jumped on this conduit is because I have experience with these things and these conduits are always a problem. They're always bad. The wires always get messed up inside there. It really should have new conduit ran. Um, but right now we're in a pinch. We need to get them running and we can talk about doing new conduit later. So I need to fix this temporarily. Um, and then I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and replace that motor because there's no electrical shorts. I found no reason for it to blow a fuse, nothing shorted to ground, and there's no electrical shorts in the wire. So I'm gonna probably go ahead and replace the motor eliminate the headaches and then hope that there's no internal damage to the compressor. You know, I used to fight these changing these condenser fan motors and then one day I just decided, you know, there's got to be an easier way. It was a, it shouldn't say one day, like there was a, a point in my career when I kind of just slowed down and started thinking and that's when I kind of developed the whole big picture diagnosis thing. And it's not something anything that I invented. I mean, anybody can do it. Everybody does it. It's just, that's my little, you know, mantra I go by. Something as simple as getting these condenser fan motors out. I used to fight these all the time with these belly band brackets and trying to fit the wires through there and they're always tight. When two seconds, loosen up one of the bolts and look at that, boom. I mean, simple things like that. Just stop, take a step back and look at the big picture. It's usually if it's something difficult, you're probably doing it wrong. I mean, there's that weird instance where you run into those things where it seems like the engineer just designed it to be a nightmare, but most stuff, you know, fighting these condenser fan motors just move remove one bolt boom belly band opens up slide the motor right out you got to be smart cut the bolts off the bottom of the motor so you don't poke the condenser when you set it down in there and then most importantly if the unit has drain plugs you take them off on the opposite end so this motor is going to sit like this so you leave the drain plug in the top and you take the drain plugs out the bottom that way if condensation builds up in the motor it drains out the bottom and if it rains, it doesn't go on the top. All right, hack work temporary in full effect. Um, went ahead and repaired everything, extended everything, wire nutted everything, put the capacitor over here, that way it's not sitting underneath there, secured everything temporarily. This is just a mess over here. This will be part of my quote to fix all this stuff clean it all up, all that good fancy stuff. But I'm gonna put it together and uh, hope that uh, we don't have any problems with that compressor now. All right, we are ready to fire it up. Um, let's see if I can see the current draw. So this motor is allowed to run 4.7 amps and uh, we are ready to fire it up right now. So we're gonna start with condenser fan motors. Condenser fan motor. Now, uh, they actually are temperature controlled, so don't know if they'll turn on right now. Yeah, no condenser fan motors as of yet because they are temperature controlled. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, fire up compressors.
All right, everything's on. Condenser fan motor is spinning in the right direction. We're allowed to run 4.75 amps. So we're looking good. I'll power it down just so we can confirm that it's going in the right direction. I know it's gonna be hard on the camera, but it is currently going in a clockwise rotation. So that is correct. And we're looking good. So this is a good temporary repair. And then now uh, my compressor's running. I gotta let it run for a bit. Make sure the sight glass is running clear and make sure we don't have any problems and it doesn't shut off on thermal overload again. We have been running for a good 20 minutes now. The box temp should be coming down, but we have got a flashing sight glass and it has been flashing the whole time. It is not cleared up. So uh, we probably got a low charge on this bad boy too. This does have a, a head pressure control valve. Um, we are going to have to go ahead and top off the charge and again we'll make that part of our quote to return and do a leak check and all that. Look at this. They had some guys come out and install new ice machines for them and I love how they uh, just ran SJ cord <laughs> to the ice machine condensers all the way over here. Look at it. It's really cool looking. That's nice. Seems very professional, right? Anyways, um, so I'm gonna go get some refrigerant and uh, we'll get that going too. All right, the sight glass is just about to clear up. I probably put in half a pound, but that is just the what I would call the, the normal refrigerant charge. The fact that we're not below 180 PSI means that our head pressure control valve is not bypassing right now. So we still need to add the entire flooded charge. So if it's flashing above the bypass pressure of the head pressure control valve, then that means this thing is severely low on refrigerant. So once I clear it, like it just cleared, so we got clear sight glass now, but now we gotta add the entire winter charge, which is gonna be quite a bit of gas. So we're gonna add a couple pounds and then I'll pump it down and check the liquid level and then we'll go from there. Looks like I've marked it here before and wrote 17 pounds as the total charge, but look at this. Looks like it's definitely leaking right there. But we still gotta check the evaps too, but like I said, I'm not gonna do that today. The condenser's not too dirty. A little bit, but not bad. Well, it's definitely leaking there. It gets worse when I front seated it. So I'll put the cap on it so I can check the liquid level, but we're definitely gonna have to change the receiver because you can't fix that packing gland on that one. All right, now we got to uh, weigh the cylinder. It weighed 23 pounds before I brought it up. That way I know how much to sell them. And uh, we are coming down in temp. We gotta go follow up, check on the box. Looks like we're leaking right here too on the top, but I did loosen that packing and they do do that when the packings are loose. So we gotta watch that. We'll make sure if we do a follow-up, if they want us to come back and do a leak check, then you know we'll go through all the whole rack and everything. Um, it's going to take a long time for it to come down to temp. This thing's under a heavy load. When it comes to refrigeration, oftentimes you can't always do you know the 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 fix that you want to do because the customer needs to be up and running. So obviously they called me out of desperation. This was the start of the virus, like right before we even had to have masks on. Um, so they really weren't open, right? They were just serving to-go food. So they this was the beginning. Everybody was still confused. And um, they didn't even know they were allowed to call because of corporate rules and stuff. Long story short, they were. But by the time they called me, the box temp was extremely high. Um, so once I got there, I evaluated everything, saw that there was an electrical short. But I've said this many times before. I don't like to change fuses. Fuses do not go bad for no reason. Something causes the fuses to go bad, okay? Um, and I don't like to just go in there and slap a fuse and turn it on and see what happens. Now, in this situation, it was extra critical because I only had one fuse. Normally, when I do fuses, I change them both. And actually, when I do go back on the follow-up, once we get the quote approved, I am going to replace both the fuses and fix all the conduit too. But to go back to the beginning, I only had one fuse, so I had to make sure that we got this right because I didn't want to run without fuses unless I absolutely had to, okay? 
So I went ahead and tested everything for shorts to ground, looking for issues. I found some chafed wires. I ended up peeling back that entire conduit, and that was a mess because I had to cut it piece by piece. I ended up damaging wires inside of it. But even still, I was paying attention the entire time. Now, I did find a wire that had rubbed out, but looking further into it, it actually didn't even go to my motor. It went to another motor, okay? So I didn't just stop there. I kept going. Once I found that I didn't see anything wrong with the electrical, the only other thing it could have been was either a capacitor issue or a fan motor issue. I tested the capacitor, nothing wrong with the capacitor, so I went ahead and replaced the fan motor. Now, I have experience with this restaurant, I have experience with this particular rack, and I knew to look at that conduit as an issue because that's always an issue with these things. And you saw how many wires they had jammed inside that conduit. And using that type of conduit too, really they shouldn't have done that, but using that type of conduit, the wires just sit there and rub and they chafe and then short out. But Anyways, I did not find a short in the conduit, so I looked towards the fan motor, okay? The fan motor was an older fan motor. I went ahead and made an educated decision, kept the customer in the loop, talked to them, made sure they were okay with it, and I suggested that we replace the condenser fan motor. Now, I went ahead and did that. We still have to go back, though, because the temporary repair I made on that conduit is not going to last, and I did tell the customer that. I called uh, the facilities department and said, hey, here's the deal. I got your rack up and running, but we need to do this repair sooner than later because what I did is just going to short out again. Without the conduit, now the wires are rubbing against the um, the the ends for the, the the conduit, basically, the little connectors, the MX connectors. It's rubbing in weird places on those too, so they are going to have more problems, so we got to get back out there, but... What I started this with was in refrigeration, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get the customer up and running. You have to make temporary repairs. Yes, I realize that some customers, if you make a temporary repair, they'll never call you back. Luckily, I don't work for those kinds of customers. I know what my customers are going to do, and I know that they're going to approve this repair. I'm also willing to work with them and say, hey, look, I know that times are tight. So, you know, I did this to get you up and running, that kind of stuff. So, once we get the, uh, the the repair, I'll try to get some footage of that going back. We're going to end up, my quote is going to re, to um, redo the electrical for the entire rack, for all the condenser fan motors, even for, um, yeah, for all three of the condenser fan motors, basically. And then uh, very likely when I do that, I'll probably go ahead and make a permanent repair to the ice machine electrical too that I showed inside there without even making an issue of it. You know, it, things like that, like I could bring it up to the customer and say, oh my gosh, this other company, they did a horrible job. I'd rather not. I just, I'd rather just fix it in this quote and just be done with it rather than raise hell. When you do that kind of stuff, you have to think about it as a business owner too. When you start, you know, talking crap or even if a company's doing something wrong, when you start pointing out flaws and stuff like that, oftentimes customers want to try to back bill that customer and they'll hold off paying you while, or contractor. They'll hold off paying me. They'll tell me to fix it, but then they won't pay my bill because they want the contractor to pay it. And the contractor, and the, it just turns into something stupid. So if I can make a repair and it won't take me very long and I could just fix the conduit or add conduit to that ice machine, it, I'll just do it in this quote. That's what I would do. So, um, but again, Big picture diagnosis, guys. I can't stress that one enough, okay? I'm not an expert. I don't know everything. I just like to try to figure things out, okay? Compressors, they don't just go off on thermal overload. Something caused it. You don't just say, eh, well, let's see what happens. I mean, you got to figure out why. In this situation, it has an auto reset pressure control, okay? Auto reset sucks, but because it'll cause compressor damage, basically overload the compressors. On the flip side though, here in Southern California in the summertime, if we didn't have auto reset pressure controls, I kid you not, every weekend I'd be resetting pressure controls when we have our heat waves. When we hit 110, 120 degrees, we'd be out there resetting pressure controls all day long. So it's one of those things you gotta have auto reset on there or just create so many nuisance service calls. All right, enough babbling. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Remember that I do live streams Monday evening, um, 5 p.m. Pacific time, work permitting, of course, where I discuss these videos, answer questions. Feel free to send me questions. Anything you guys got, I'll try to hit, um, answer it on the live stream if I can. Uh, also have my new tools channel, HVACR Tools, new content coming on that soon. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll catch you guys on the next one, okay?